Welcome to today's CST tutorial. Today we'll be looking at the schematic tool and another way to investigate mismatch loads for a 50 ohm line. So to get started, please refer to the previous videos on creating a 3D 50 ohm line. In my case, I've used magnesium oxide, which has a relative permittivity of 9.7. I've used a substrate thickness of 0 0.5. And a 50 ohm transmission line has a width of 0.48 millimeters. Now, for this experiment, we can also use something on like Rogers 4003C, where the board thickness could be 0.603 or around 0.6 millimeters, and we could have a 50 ohm transmission line at about 1.3 millimeters. And we can simulate this in copper, but in this case, I've used PEC for zero losses. Okay, so our first thing we want to is get our transmission line and we want to simulate it. Once we've simulated it, we can go over to our schematic tool. This takes the simulated results and then converts it to a single block within the schematic tool, in which we can then create an architecture around it. So now, Let's go through the user interface within the schematic tool. Here we have our task, update, optimizer, parameter sweep, and so forth. Filter synthesis, we don't have to focus on that net, uh, uh, so far, but one important thing here is going to be our external port. So previously, port one and two correlate to the waveguide ports on the microstrip. Now, if we want to excite this to get the exact same results, we can put a port here and then click and click and we can also hover the green dot over the line and stretch it out. So if we were to simulate this, um, we'll get the exact same results because remember it saved the S parameters of this device and shoved it into a block. Now the schematic tool uses a, a, a lot faster and algebraic tool. It's not gonna resolve the 3D environment. So we're gonna have very swift um, simulation times. Okay, for example, if I want to just double check that it's the exact same as the 3D environment, I can click on schematic, go to task, new task, S parameters, okay, our frequency range, and maybe I want to jump up the number of points to 10,001. Okay, I'm gonna click update, and it does it instantaneously. And there we go, there's our transmission line. Now previously, we've taken the 3D environment and we've put a lumped element on the end and we've had to re-simulate that. Well, we can get the exact same results a lot quicker if we were to, rather than putting port two as a waveguide port, let's delete this, and actually put it as a resistive load. To get a resistive load, we're gonna to go to the block selection tree. Here, we're gonna navigate down to circuit elements we're going to hold our mouse still to see what this block is. Perfect, a resistor. We're going to drag and drop. We're going to connect one side. We're going to now change the resistance value to actually this RES variable that I have in my working space, which is currently 200. I'm then going to get a ground and connect the ground. Perfect. Now I'm gonna click update and then navigate over to my navigation tree and click on the S parameters. So here, if we were to look at the Smith chart, we can see that at 200 ohms, it achieves the similar response we've seen in the previous videos. We can change this to 50. Delete the results. Go back to home, update. And now we can wait for the results. And unfortunately, I think it's actually initialized my 3D. So I thought the 3D space may have changed again. So now it's gonna quickly recalculate the 3D space, which it shouldn't have, but it is unfortunately. And then it will then recalculate um, the S parameters. So I'm gonna let that sit there for a second and I'll be back when that's done. 
Okay, it's now completed. Just to ensure this doesn't happen again, I'm just going to create a brand new parameter called R. I'm going to force it to 50, uh, 59, sure. And I'm going to go to my schematic and just make that R. Okay, now I can click the update, run the simulation results, and it does it instantaneously. Now we can go check IS parameters again. And we can see at a 59 ohm load, we can see it slightly shifted. Now we're going to click this very powerful tool called Tune. As you can see, we now have the capabilities to change parameters within our schematic view and see how those change impact our results in real time. So I set the amount of simulation points to 10,001. If we go uh, any higher, it's going to slow it down even more. But if we keep it at 1,000, it's going to be very instantaneous. So I'm going to set this to a 5 ohm load at minimum, all the way up to a 500 ohm load. I can now tune it to 49. And there we go, perfect. It's now a quite a good match load. I can push it all the way down to 5, and we can see 0 0.1, and somewhere near 10, perfect. A 5 ohm load, we can push it in the other direction, 229. So now, a very powerful tool for us to quickly analyze what mismatch loads do. And all the way up to 500. Okay. And it's good to know that a 5 ohm load has a very similar Smith chart response to a 500 ohm load. Okay, and that is our schematic tool. In the future, I'll talk about more of the capabilities of schematic tool in which it is a very powerful tool. Normally the, pro uh, the process used for microwave design is to imagine the circuit in the schematic view or using other tools like ADS and then to transform it from the schematic view and then into 3D. Okay, thank you for tuning into this video. I'll see you in the next one.